Welcome back. As a part of this lecture, we'll understand how do we optimize the queries in Hive. So consider there is a e-commerce site with lot of transactions across the country where you live in. Now, in e-commerce site, especially when we're talking about a biggies like Amazon, Flipkart, we have billions of records over many years. Literally billions of records. When you have a billions of records, if you have to query something from the data, let us take an example here. If you want to query some data by a state called Washington or any state like KA or UP in India by using Hive, what exactly happens? If you want to query the orders where the state is Washington, how does the Hive work? You submit the query through your terminal. Hive takes that and runs that on HDFS, right? Or Hadoop. What exactly is happening under the hood? Hive is converting the queries into MapReduce jobs. Because it is converting into MapReduce jobs, it is already taking the time for conversion of HiveQL to MR jobs. And then that need to go and work on the HDFS. So it is literally slow. Apart from querying, then converting them to MapReduce jobs, then running it on data and HDFS, one more complication comes into picture. It is very hard to debug and maintain because we are not dealing with the small amount of data here. We are dealing with the huge amount of data. Anything happens, it takes more amount of time. Considering all these things, beautiful thing done in Hive is, Hive tries to simplify the query rating to improve the query performance in many ways by optimizing the writing of queries. There are three ways we can approach it. One is design tables to optimize the queries. The second one is structure the query itself so that they can run faster or simplifying the expressions so that they are easy to maintain. These are the three ways Hive approaches the optimization of queries. There may be some more other ways also. We'll concentrate on these three important ways. Then how do we design the tables to optimize the queries? We design the tables to optimize the queries by partitioning and bucketing. And how do you structure the queries so that they run faster? By join optimizations. And how do you simplify the query for expressions so they are easy to maintain by using the window functions? How do we approach the partitioning and bucketing? We approach the partitioning and bucketing by designing the tables while creating the hive tables itself so that queries run only on the subset of the data rather than on the whole table. Here, if you see the whole, considering this is a whole data, while designing the hive table, design it in such a way that you have some partitions. Here, if you have a whole table, go ahead and bucket it into different buckets. We are essentially splitting the data into smaller manageable parts. That is 
while creating the tables itself. When we split the data into smaller parts, it enables the performance optimizations. We'll take a couple of examples in our next lecture and see how partitioning works and how bucketing works. Let us say you have same Amazon example, e-commerce site. You have the customers all over the US, potentially millions of customers. If you have millions of customers, from millions of customers, if you have billions of transactions, what we can do as a part of the partitioning is we can go ahead and split the data based on some logic. In this case, logic can be, you can split the data based on the states like Washington, Oregon, California, Cincinnati, New York, and Georgia. In India, Uttar Pradesh, Bihar, Karnataka, Tamil Nadu, Parisa, West Bengal, like that. So we can split the data based on some logical partition. What is the use of splitting the data on logical partition based on the state? Whenever you want to query on a state specific data, instead of browsing through all these six partitions, we can only go ahead and browse through the records in this particular partition. One important thing is splits may not be of the same size. We'll discuss that in more detail. If we cannot do the logical partitioning, what we can do is we can go ahead with the bucketing. As a part of the bucketing, we'll split the whole data into different buckets, B1, B2, B3. What we'll do is usually here as a part of the bucketing, we'll hash a column value based on the address, name, R, timestamp, anything. It depends on the project you are in. You can hash a column and split that into different buckets like bucket one, bucket two, bucket three, and bucket four. Each bucket will be a separate file in HDFS. Whenever we split the data into these buckets, the sampling and also joining of the data would be more efficient. If you don't split the data into buckets, the whole table has to compare records, right? While joining. But when you have some joining within the same bucket, it will be easy for us to go ahead and do the sampling and joining of the data. As you know, join operations are map produce jobs under the hood. One more way of looking at is we can optimize the join operations by reducing the amount of data held in memory. And the second thing is are structuring the joins in such a way that there, it is only map only operations. Remember in some of the practical classes you have seen already map only jobs. Whenever we run a map only jobs the time taken will be less. Let us take an example here. Assume you have two tables. One is of 500 GB. Another one is of 5 MB table. If you have to join these two tables in the big data scenario, this large table would be split across multiple machines in the cluster. If, since it is a small table, it may be there in one of the data nodes. Whenever you are joining these two tables, one is of 500 GB, another is of 500 MB. Usually what happens in the joins is one of the table will be held in memory and the other is read from the disk. Now, if you store the table, which is larger in a memory, memory cannot hold this whole of data. That is the reason what we can do is for better performance, 
we need to have smaller table is held in the memory the bigger table would be held in the hard disk this would definitely reduce the amount of time taken to join the bigger table with the smaller table as we already indicated map reduce have two phases of processing one is map phase another one is reducer phase certain queries can be structured in such a way that there is no reduce phase in that so that way we are saving the time instead of running both map and reduce operations we can go ahead and complete the work by only doing the map chops wonderful we discussed how do we optimize the queries in different ways thank you mm -hmm.